my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Who could have focused, who could have planned? If I tried to pay a million dollars, I could not have planned for a better two or three weeks. All culminating with today. Culminating with today, it's all over social media, all over Insta, Twitter, Facegram, you book. It's everywhere. Political pundit, conservative commentator Tommy Lauren has gone viral with the video that she made on Instagram. And uh, for good reason. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, it's pretty uh, that gum. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty amazing. I would just put it that way. It's pretty amazing. And uh, you see the title of the video. I said, Tommy Lauren has something to teach black women. You need to listen to this. Black women, yes, you need to listen to Tommy Lauren. But before we get into this, uh, thank you to all the moderators. Thank you to all the Patreons. Thank you to everybody that makes this channel possible. Um, yes, talk about getting a Red Bull sponsorship. Who knew? Fragrance of the night. Baccarat 540 extract of parfum and the Baccarat crystal. Oh, 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 oh. But let's get into it. Let me go ahead and pop this chat box out over here because it's hard to see it over there. Moderators, I can't really see what's going on in the chat room. Uh, when we get over, if we get over 2,000 people tonight, I'll go ahead and switch it to slow chat move because it starts to move too fast. Uh, but tonight, we're going to get into it, man. Tommy Lauren has got something to teach black women. Now, I know some women are probably going to already be upset because they're like, who is Tommy Lauren? Who is Tommy Lauren? Who is Tommy Lauren? This is Tommy Lauren. And all her blonde hair, hazel eyes or whatever, that's Miss Tommy Lauren. We're going to put her right over there so she ain't all up in my candles. This woman right here has something to teach black women. I have been trying to do my best uh, talking about, you know, trying to find out what men want. You know, men that are out there trying to become high value trying to become either Blue Henry or Blake Henry or a hit squad, trying to get out there and become the best version of themselves, getting the top 10% of all men, masters of the universe, that kind of thing. And then the top 20% of women who are really tend to be drawn and attracted to that group of men. You know, it's far easier for, uh, it, it's far easier to communicate a direct message uh, to, a, to a man. As simple as that, it's far easier to do that. Uh, it's, it's not crazy to say, or to understand it. Some people have said, you know, like Rebecca Lynn Pope, why she no longer, uh, match makes for women because of some of women's unrealistic standards. My computer's running a little slow guys. So I got to try to get caught up over here. A lot of women's unrealistic standards in today's dating scene. And that really ticked quite a few women off because, uh, well, it just did. It simply did. It simply did. It simply did. So instead of going back and forth, back and forth with a bunch of people that I, I really don't know that you don't know, I just say, let's get into it. Let's get into the content and let's see what Tommy Lauren has to teach black women. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Hold on to your hats. This is gonna be a barn burner. Let's see, can we get her? Is she already talking yet? How are we doing tonight, people? All right. Nope, it's not coming through yet.
Hmm. Let me start this again. You build it as we fly, baby. Bluetooth. Nope. That's what it is. Give me a second, guys. It's storming up. It is It is raining really hard down here in Hot Atlanta, too. So if it goes out or something, you know what you need to do. Just hit refresh and we'll keep it moving. All right. What's up? I'm going to let you guys trickle in before I start talking because this is important did you guys get the notification so waiting for you guys to get here so normally i do final thoughts and i do instagram lives and i do rants about politics um there's plenty to talk about in politics right now do it every day it's a great time but something as of recently has been on my mind and i consider myself a teacher a helper um someone who could possibly inspire people to be better so with that being said, this is a PSA for all the men out there and all the boys who think they're men, but they're actually boys. This is gonna be the summer of canceling boys. Now from my own personal experiences and the experiences of all of my friends, which range in age from 24 to 36, we've all got issues. Now I will also say this, all of my friends are attractive. All of my friends are successful. All of my friends have something going on. Almost every single one of them have an issue with men. And you have to start looking at that and thinking, if an age range of that many people, including myself, living really all over the country and being blonde, brunette, short hair, long hair, I mean, tan, super white, super pale. I mean, these women range in every body type and every everything. They're all successful, they're all intelligent, they're all good people. But if all of these women, including myself, are having issues, then I have to think, it might not be us. It might be you, it might be men, it might be men. Now, I've often talked about the pussification of America and how men are no longer men. I talk to my mom about this a lot and she says, well, maybe it's just the guys in Texas. Maybe it's just the guys in Los Angeles. Maybe it's just the guys, just the, just the guys. Um, it is not just the guys in Los Angeles, Nashville, Dallas, and it's not, they're not any better in the Midwest. They, quite frankly, I think they're trash all over this country in the age range of about 20 to I think about 55, maybe even 60. A lot of men are trash. A lot of men don't know how to treat women. A lot of men don't know how to really, quite frankly, pull their heads out of the sand and pay attention. So I am going to help you. And these are some of the things that I've experienced. And these are some of the things my friends have experienced. I, again, I'm just gonna lay a few things out. They haven't all happened to me. Some of them have just happened to my friends. A lot of them have happened to me. So the first thing, and I've made notes, by the way, I've made notes. This is how invested I am in this because I've been thinking about this for about two weeks solid now. First question for men, if you like a girl, if you're even somewhat interested in a girl, you need to ask yourself this question. Are you single? No, I don't mean are you kind of single, seeing five people, dating somebody, still kind of in a relationship, kind of broken up, kind of on again, off again, kind of married, kind of divorced. Are you actually single, single? That means single. You have nobody. You have no complications. You have no attachments. You are actually single. That is the first question, believe it or not, that needs to be asked. And ladies, you should be asking it because in 2020, it's not a given anymore that a guy that's actively pursuing you is actually single. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing that I think is very important that men don't seem to understand. There are very few women out there, and I'm speaking from personal experience as well as from all of my friends and all the women, quite frankly, that I talk to. There is not a woman out there that wants to be your pen pal. She doesn't want to get your texts, your good morning texts, your good night texts, your random through the day texts, if they don't follow up with a plan to actually, here's the kicker, in person, 
hang out. Now I know what you're saying, oh, it's COVID, people can't hang out in person. This has not been a four month problem. This has been a five year problem that I've experienced with men and my friends have experienced with men. Women do not want a pen pal. We don't want a texting pal. We quite frankly don't care if you text us all day or if you don't text us at all. If you're not gonna make a plan to actually see us in person, not interested. And if you do have a woman out there that just wants to be your pen pal, it's probably because she has a boyfriend or a husband or a wife or whatever. We don't want a pen pal. But that also leads me to my second point. And this is gonna be backwards for you guys. Make plans. Make a plan. Do not assume that you can text somebody randomly in the middle of the day, what are you doing? Or text them at midnight or 1 a.m. or 2 a.m or even just within hours of when you actually want to see them and think that they're going to be available. I personally, once I get home and I take my makeup off and I'm watching TV, I'm no longer interested. So if you didn't make a plan earlier in the day or better yet, a day or two or three in advance, I'm not interested. I don't want to hang out anymore because that ship has sailed. Make a plan. I want to hang out with you at this time. It doesn't have to even be a date. I want to see you at this time. Are you free at this time? Or when are you free? I will accommodate my schedule to see you. When are you free? I want to see you. I know it's not rocket science, but men of 2020, it seems like it's pretty difficult for you to figure out. And I'm not a feminist, so please don't take this as a feminist rant. I love men. I think men are great. I think men have failed themselves and they failed us. And I'm just trying to help you out because I think there are a lot of really great guys out there who need a little help. And I don't think that there are a lot of women that are stepping up and saying these things and not, and not and FaceTime me, I swear to God. Quite frankly, I don't think that there are a lot of women that aren't raging feminists that don't look like Lena Dunham. They're saying these things to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and say them because they need to be said. I am really so sick of my friends having to deal with trash men. I am tired of dealing with trash men. So I'm gonna help you out. Make plans. So let's go through these lists again because I know y'all love a list. Number one, are you single? Number two, make a plan. Nobody wants a pen pal. We wanna actually see you. If not, don't text us because it's a waste of our time and we don't wanna see it on our phones. Got it? All right. Next thing, value, value. Okay, value, value, take that in. Just repeat it to yourself until it makes sense. Okay, if you wanna date a girl that has nothing going on, then that's fine. But please do not mix in people like me and my friends who have something going on with your other girls that have nothing going on. And by nothing going on, I mean this. I don't, there is no job that is unimportant. There is no job that's not valuable or that's not worthy, it is. But if you wanna mix in people like me and people like my friends who are go-getters, who work really hard, who make their own money, who are talented, skilled, ambitious. Please don't mix us in with the Tatianas. We don't want to be there. If that's what you want, find them. Please, for the love of God, do not mix us in with them because we don't want to be there. And quite frankly, we take it as an insult if we find out that you are also talking to five Tatianas who have nothing going on. People like me and my friends are gonna be insulted by that. And there's almost really no coming back from it. So if you want that kind of a girl, the kind of girl who's just kind of happy going through the motions you tell of life, Tommy. not really super ambitious, hasn't really found herself yet, doesn't really have a whole lot going on other than she's pretty, please just go after them. And please do not mix us in. We don't want to be there. I promise you. So value, value. There's a lot of women out there that I know that are my good friends who have amazing jobs, who work really hard, but who can't seem to find a decent guy, even if they go up in age five to 10 to 15 years, because those guys all want to be with 21 year olds who have nothing going on. It's very unfortunate. I don't think it's going to be fulfilling, but I would say to the men out there, Try to maybe find a woman that you can talk to, communicate with, might actually have her shit together, might actually be ambitious and have something going on or want to have something going on. I don't care what she does. She doesn't have to be on TV. She doesn't have to be a PhD. She doesn't have to be a television producer. She doesn't have to own her own company, but be ambitious and have something going on. Those women out there are gonna be a lot more fulfilling to you. You're actually gonna enjoy your time. And if you actually might want a sustainable, and healthy and stable relationship, that's probably the kind of girl you're gonna need to find. Not 
the Tatianas who just want to look cute and post Instagram stories. Now, I love a good Instagram story. Y'all know I do. I love a good boomerang. I love a good whatever. But if that's all you do, men, if that's all she does, probably Houston, we have a problem. Just gonna let you in on a little tip. The next thing on my list is this, consistency. It really does not help me or my friends or any woman in general if you are really cool and you're really interested when you first start talking to them and then give it three, four, five days and all of a sudden you're not consistent anymore. You don't make plans, you don't really care, you kind of fade in and out, you're talking to five other Tatianas, Consistency is important. Now, if you wanna be inconsistent and you wanna ghost and you wanna fall off the radar, that's fine, but I'm gonna give you a pro tip. People like me and people like my friends, we aren't gonna really give a shit after that. We don't really care. The Fs have been given and we're kinda of done. I'll tell you this from personal experience. Once I'm turned off, I am turned off and I don't care anymore. Because there at one point, I probably did care. At one point, my friends, they probably did care. They probably did like you because you expressed interest and maybe you were cool and maybe you were kind of fun to hang out with. But if you're not consistent and you fall off the radar, I give you maybe one to two chances to fix that because I'm a very direct communicator. Women, this is important. I will communicate to you. If your communication isn't great, I will let you know that. I will let you know that more effort is needed. But if you don't heed that warning and I have to warn you twice, I'm done at that point because I don't really care anymore. Now I'm done. Now I don't care. And I know my friends who are watching this are thinking and saying the same thing because we have these conversations on an almost daily basis. Once you turn us off, we don't care anymore. So let that be a warning to you. You're probably not gonna circle back. They always come back. They always come back. But when you're ready to come back, I probably don't care anymore. So if you wanna switch up, stay there. Pro tip. My last thing on my list is also very important. Don't be, excuse my language, don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. If you have then failed and you lost a woman of value like myself or my friends, and then we don't really care anymore, don't be a bitch. Don't be butt hurt. You did it to yourself, okay? And it's no longer my problem. Now it's become a personal problem of yours. So don't be a bitch. And by the way, if I'm no longer interested because your effort is shitty, that's not me being a bitch. That's not me being difficult. That's me having a standard in which I expect from people. I do have high standards and high expectations. My friends have high standards and high expectations. Do you wanna know why? We've worked for those, okay? We work hard, we're successful. We take care of ourselves. We try to look cute. We or have a, a desire to be something more each day, okay? That's why we have the ability to be somewhat what you call difficult. It's not difficult. We just have a baseline standard. And if you can't meet that standard, that's okay. A lot of men cannot. But if you are one of those men out there, and I, I have them all over my DMs, sometimes I check them, and you guys are like, what would it take to be with someone like you? What would it take to be with your friends? What are girls like you? What are they looking for? I laid them out for you very simply there. In order to have a shot with a girl like me or girls like my friends, girls that are worth a damn, you don't really have to be Brad Pitt. You don't have to be famous. You don't even really have to make a lot of money or have a really fantastic job. You just have to be determined. You have to be in some way successful in that you want to attain some certain kind of success for yourself. You're driven, you have goals, you can handle a woman with standards. That's not going to turn you off. And you're going to put in the effort to be with somebody like myself or my friends. We deserve that. And we will not compromise our standards. I tell you this, it will be a cold day in hell when I chase a man. And I know that's the same thing for my friends as well. And if my friends are listening and they're thinking about chasing a man, please, for the love of God, do not. Because there is not, not one single man on planet Earth, okay, that is worth making any woman feel like she is not good enough. I don't care how hot a girl is, how smart, how successful, how rich, we have all dealt with men who treat us like we are not good enough. No, the problem is we are too enough and you can't handle it. 
So those are my checklists. Again, I will go through them for you one more time in case you are just tuning in. Number one, are you single? No, really. Two, make plans. We don't want a pen pal. Three, value, value. Value someone who has value. Consistency, be consistent. Don't be great and then fade out. And then don't fade out and then think that you're gonna fade back in because it ain't gonna work. And last but not least, if all else fails, don't be a bitch. Hope you guys have all enjoyed my PSA, my Instagram live. I love you all. Hope I gave you some valuable tips and advice. But hey, those are just my final thoughts from Nashville, Tennessee in my kitchen. God bless and take care. Tommy Lauren, if you just took Tommy Lauren out and you could have just put any, any sister in, that was the same playbook. And I mentioned that and when I did that colorism stream that I said, yes, colorism does exist, but it's not the main thing. I tied it all into simply this. Tommy Lauren is a high value woman from a resource standpoint. And she wants a high value man, a man that she feels like is on her hypergamic level. But at best, she is an eternal seven. She is a she is a cute girl. She's an adjustable six that could go from six to eight really dressed up, but her life is really closer to six. She's cute. And her issue is that she wants high value men and she wants to be treated like a pretty, beautiful or gorgeous woman. And the way she's buying into these men You're not still muted, man. Come on. Sound is fine. Sound is fine. So she wants a high value man and she wants to be treated like a high value man. Oh, let me let you guys catch up. Where are you guys at, man? I know we hear you. You guys need to understand something. YouTube is on a delay. We have weather issues going on here and you just have to deal with it. <laughs> this is not live TV. There's not 50 people in here. There's one person here. There's no cameraman, there's no sound man, there's no somebody on the teleprompter. There's no lighting, no somebody behind the script. There's one freaking person. So, catch back up. All Tommy Lauren was basically doing is she was running the I deserve a high value man playbook. Why? Because I'm the crap. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a single woman. I'm a high earner. I'm this, I'm that. And she started out with her list, but here's the problem. Tommy Lauren, adjustable six an adjustable six, which means she can be a six up to an eight. But for the most part, she hangs in that cute range and she wants a man that's not on her looks level back into the list. You got to be single. I agree. You need to be single. But ladies, like it or not, you guys wanted this deregulated open sexual market. This is what you got. Don't text without plans. Unfortunately, you and your girlfriends, women have lowered the value of lowered the price of casual sex. So now you got Netflix and chill. You want fine dining treatment in a fast food market. Make plans. But here's the here's where she started to go off the rails. Value, value. Why? Why does she want you to value, value? Because that's what she has to pay with. She is not hot enough to be trying to demand the high price she's asking. She's a solid Honda Accord and she wants Mercedes prices. 
How many times have we heard uh, these same things come from too many of our sisters? I got my degree. I got a good job. I got that all that. I heard people in the chat room saying she sounds like a lot of sisters. And that's true. Be consistent. Don't ghost her and don't be a B. That's what she said. Tommy Lauren was reading out of the woman's playbook who she chose to. She chose to become an ambitious, career-driven woman. And she said, guys, guys don't want a 27-year-old woman in the danger zone. Because she's 27 and in the danger zone. Guys don't want a 27-year-old woman in the danger zone. Danger zone. They would rather have a 21-year-old who's just sitting over there being pretty. And that's where we're at. So black women, remember when I said colorism, colorism does exist. It does. It does. But just like any, but, but like, however, isms, I, I rarely see a woman of any skin tone who is feminine, beautiful, inspirational, cooperative, easy to get along with, friendly. Who has the kind of problems? What did she say? I'm a direct communicator. That's another word for being a ball breaker. Her last point was don't be a B. And that's really what a lot of guys consider women like that. So sisters, what is Tommy Lauren teaching you? She's teaching you that even if you're a thin white woman and you have this kind of attitude, you cannot get a high value man to stick around. She's teaching you that if you're a thin white woman with blonde hair, if you act like this, you will get a harsh kind of treatment. Remember when I said it's not your skin tone as much as it's your attitude? It's an attitude. So yes, I'm trolling in the title. You doggone right I am. Because I need to get your attention so you can realize that Tommy Lauren has been getting drugged in the media. She is a conservative pundit. People have been calling her a feminist left and right. People are like, Cry. she's lost it so much so. So much so that we got to talk about something. But before we get into that, man, we got to get these likes up. And I'll go back and I'll cut that part of that segment out. But here's the thing. We got to we got to get the likes up, man, because that's what's going on over here. She's been getting drugged to death. Drug for filth in the media. Why? Because here's something that black men can learn black people can learn there's a let me take that back why is tommy lauren getting drugged because she is playing the old game while you used to just say anything you want to about men but this cancel culture online men have been getting their voice and now they're finally pushing back in under four days, this whole story went from what happened then to what we're about to learn now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, waiting for you all to just join on in here. Some of you, I probably will answer some questions uh, later on, but I have some things I need to go through first. <laughs> All right, so for those of you the other night, I believe it was Monday night, who watched my PSA for Boyish Men, um, it has since gained a little bit of traction. Uh, I also posted it on Facebook, and I think it's sitting at about 1.5 million views right now. So obviously, it picked up a little bit of talks, which is okay, not like, I'm not used to that. I'm very used to it. But I did wanna clear a few things up about that video and just expand on it a little bit because that's always important. You can't ever say everything you wanna say in 15 minutes. And I've heard a lot of comments on it, a lot of praise, a lot of criticism, so I figured I'd just go through some of them if y'all are ready. All right, so first of all, the, some of the, the misperceptions and misconceptions about some of the things I said in that video that I wanna go through real quick. First and foremost, okay, <laughs> 
I don't think all men are trash. And I also want to again. I mean, to shut this shit down. Tommy Lauren is teaching black women a very valuable lesson. A very valuable lesson. What is that? You cannot just drag me in and get away with it. The point I made, and I have to keep toggling because people talk about echo. We don't have to deal with the echo. The point I made is notice Tommy's demeanor. Notice how she's coming in to fix this. She said all men are trash. That's what she said. All men are trash. She didn't edit anything. She doubled and tripled down. She was she was full of that uh 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 because she didn't get any pushback. Because what is why? Because this playbook had worked in the black community for 50 years. But see the white community, other communities where they have family system, uh patriarchy, family values, if nothing else, they have seen what is happening in our community. What happens when you let this gender war take root? Men are pushing back and they are shutting this crap down. Tommy Lauren has got something to teach you. Think about it. This was, was going on in our community for 50 years. This didn't even get a week. She made a video on Monday and on Thursday, she was back. He was moonwalking backwards like a mug. That I made between boys and men. There is a big difference between boys and men. And I'm not talking about an age difference. I'm talking about a mentality difference. If you are a man and you watch that and you thought that I was calling you trash, I will apologize for that because I don't think all men are trash. I don't think any men are trash at all. I think that some boys who think that they are men have a tendency, shall we say, in 2020 to not quite act the right way. And I'm not saying that girls act the right way, mind you. Okay, this is an equal opportunity situation here, but I'm not a dude in case you haven't noticed. I don't identify as a dude, I'm not a dude. So for me to do a video about how crappy women are in the dating scene, I really don't think I could offer you that much knowledge on it because I've never dated a girl yet. Okay. Ladies, Tommy's got something to teach you. She said, I just made a video talking about how crappy it is dating men in the dating scene. But I'm not a dude. So stop asking me to talk about how bad it is being a man in the dating scene because I don't date her. See, she is teaching. She's got something to teach you, black women. When brothers or men start coming out talking about their experiences in the dating world, Stop at and you ask the same questions that she got from men. She said it. I'm a woman. I got to give it to you from a woman's standpoint. And I can't tell you what it's like to be you. I'm just telling you what it's like to be me. See, that will work in an environment where they're actually trying to keep families together, trying to keep relationships together. But see, people will come over to men or women in the black community and the men will ask the women to talk about, talk about how bad y'all are. And the women will ask the men, talk about how bad you are. This is a college level course. And ladies, what are you learning from Tommy? She came in running the, I'm strong, independent, don't need no man. I'm high value and I got standards and I got, you don't chase no man. I ain't gonna compete for no man. Don't do that. You could have, she should have been up there singing, I will survive with Gloria Gaynor. And Beyonce could have been singing and dancing in the background. But they shut that crap down because they're trying to keep their families. They're trying to keep their relationships. And now she's out here in a softer, more gentle tone doing this. Okay, so <laughs> I can't help you there. I'm not saying that girls are perfect and men are awful or boys are awful. I'm not saying that, never would say that. I'm sure that there are many horrible girls out there that do many horrible things. I myself am not perfect. I acknowledge that, I'm happy to acknowledge it. So I wanted to clear that up. Men, I don't think you're trash. I happen to hey, quite be, I'm like time men. You out if you ask me and, one more question. Uh, especially fact, you real men who act like men and who treat women the right way. And I'm gonna get into that in a little bit, but I wanna clear up uh, some other uh, misperceptions right. about the video, things that maybe you guys were confused about, so I can help you out. It was not in any way, shape or form, 
about my ex-fiance. Okay. My ex-fiance is a saint. My ex-fiance is a great individual, a great man. And the woman that ends up with him is going to be incredibly lucky because all the things that I bitched about in that video, he didn't do any of those things. He's a great guy. So I want to clear that up. It wasn't me being scorned about a broken off engagement. It wasn't me being scorned about a bad breakup. I haven't dated anybody in months. So it wasn't about that. And it wasn't about my ex-fiance. So I want to clear that up. If he's watching or his friends are watching, not about him. So if you're new to my channel, stop asking me all these questions. You're going to have to sit your butt down and pay attention. All you people with short attention spans, this is a place for people with intelligence and can think longer than two minutes. Where's the colorism part? Sit your ass down and listen. And if you can't wait until I tie it all together, leave. Like I said, this woman can't have to come back and say, oh, first off, let me clear this up about Brad. Brad is a wonderful man. It ain't about Brad. Brad is, whoo, walks on water. And about Brad or his friends or anything else, she had to go apologize to white men because her money's on the line, black men. See, when you control the economy that your women work in, they have to worry about your image. This is why I say, brothers, we got to build vertical. As long as they're working for somebody else, they can tear up our image because they're going to work in their companies. Oh, we going to get a little bit of everybody's going to get got today. Because Tommy got to go back and clear up Brad because Brad and him came for her. And Brad and him can actually impose consequences. Black men, you can't, we can't impose any consequence on our women globally. Locally, yes, globally, no. Four days. Do, 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 do. Actually, it wasn't even four days. It happened inside of four hours. See, it's not where the colorism part, like I told you two or three weeks ago, it's not your skin color, it's your attitude. She came in with the typical black girl attitude. Is that clear enough for you? Or do you need me to get you a picture book? You need me to get the big Crayolas out? Is that clear enough for you now? She came in here with the typical black girl, girl power playbook. Even though she's a conservative pundit, she tried to touch that liberal feminist stuff and she got destroyed. So understand something. If you go in the world, talking like Tommy Lauren does sisters and you think you get a bad response and you say, well, it's because I'm a, my dark skin. No, 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 no. It's your attitude. It's the attitude more than anything else. Yes. It's always going to be a factor, but it's your attitude. Another thing that I thought was kind of weird because I read some media headlines about it was that my video the other night was homophobic you're gonna have to explain that to me how that video was homophobic i don't think it was homophobic in the least i can't even wrap my mind around how anyone say it was homophobic that makes no sense to me so if anybody got that impression um maybe rewatch it because it certainly wasn't homophobic but i also brad got so much power and got is is so dope he got her apologizing for shit that she didn't even say. We're trying to get our women to stop talking about stuff. We're just trying to get them to say the truth. Stop saying it. Y'all out here making babies all over the place when 51% of black men are single and childless. Y'all all out here broke dusted when the facts are 64% of black men are in the middle class. See, the facts are on your side, brother. And far too many of the sisters that got this Tommy Lauren kind of attitude won't even tell the truth. They're telling a lie. And we can't do nothing about it because you don't control the economy that they work in. But when she goes out and tells a falsehood, a lie stretches it, even exaggerates, Brad can come down and say, oh, no, 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 no. Not only are you going to go back and make sure you you put Brad back up on the, on Mount Olympus, you're going to go apologize to the gays and, uh, and the kittens. And uh, matter of fact, who else do we need her to apologize to? The automobile deal dealers? Um... Who else? The, the, the farmers. 
um, the Airline Association. Uh, we need you to apologize to the Major League Soccer, Boy Scouts of America, um, the junior colleges. We need you to apologize to the janitors in the elementary school because if you don't, we'll take everything that you think is so great about you. That career you got, how great and wonderful you are, we'll take all of that. We'll take all that ish. Yeah, no more Fox, no more Blaze for you. We'll take all of it. And you'll just be an adjustable six blonde out here in the danger zone. Danger zone! Trying to get a husband. And you instead, and we, and we take all that from you that we gave you, we gave it to you because we built it. When we take all of it from you, you won't be sitting around and talk about all that, that list stuff. You'll just be happy to get a man, period. See, you want cooperation and submission? You better be willing to pay the price, brother. That's why when I made that video, men should pay for everything and women should be hypergamous. Here it is. See, if you want this kind of behavior from a woman, you better, we're gonna have to, gonna have to pay the cost. Oh yeah. I want to talk a little bit about a couple of the responses that I got and once again kind of just reinforcing my point here. So the kind of responses that I got from at least people that I know, males that I know, were, were two. First of all, most of the guys in my life, they either thought it was about them and it wasn't and they apologized and they didn't need to, or I had friends of mine that I've never dated who are just dudes who messaged me and said, hey, this actually really helps me out because it's a jungle out there and sometimes men don't know how to act. They don't know what women want. They don't understand what they're doing wrong, which was the whole point of my video. It wasn't to give men a guy. Now, there's a point I'm going to co-sign. I agree with her list. Let me go ahead and tell you why I agree with her list. Let me go ahead and read it to you again. You need to make sure you're single to tell the truth. You got situationships and married folks out in dating? No. Yeah, I agree. To be in my Facebook group, you got to announce your, your current status and what you're looking for. And if you're found to be false, phew, all she said is, "Don't women don't want you to be text pals. Don't contact without plans. Yeah, I've said it to the nth degree. CIA, you need to assert men if you aren't going to take, if you don't have a plan for a woman, how you doing, cutie? How you doing, sweetie? No. Contact her with a plan. I'm going out to dinner. I'd love for you to attend with me. I'm going out next Tuesday at 7. Will you be my guest? That's a yes or no. If, if she says no, you go. Somebody else. But don't, the worst thing to do is contact what you want to do. What you want to do. Man, that's weak. Making plans, but you, in order to make plans, you got to have plans. In order to have plans, you got to have a purpose and a life. One of the biggest problems we're having back and forth with, with women like this is they're outpacing men in social life. Women are far more active today. This is where guys, you can do better. You need to have a life. But I get pushback when I tell you, if you don't have a life that requires you to wear a suit from time to time, you need a broader life. You need a suit. You need a, a dinner jacket. You need to put on a tuxedo at least once a year. Oh man, I don't need no tuxedo. I don't need no suit. Okay, and you call yourself a grown man. Right. Be consistent, don't ghost her. Uh, Well, Tommy, you're getting ghosted. Because you're shooting out of your league. Line of things they already knew, it was to help you out in case there's some things you didn't, okay? Maybe men don't know that we like plans to be made. Maybe men don't know that consistency is important. Maybe men don't know that it's nice to be valued for what you bring to the table. Maybe some men don't know those things. Maybe they don't know how important community and notice that even though when she's still trying to take her shots at men, she's doing it in a bubbly kind of, just maybe that, she's not doing it in a teacher, you ain't crap kind of way. See, if this were flipped and sister in this position was talking to men in her target area, it would be a completely different energy. Tommy got something to teach you folks. 
communication is. Men and women think differently. Totally understand that. So I got a lot of men that I know who are great guys who honestly messaged me and said, hey, this is helpful. It's nice to know how women think. It's nice to know how you and your friends think. I like you. I think you're a cool chick. So it was great pointers. And that, again, reinforces my point. That is the difference between a man and a boy. The men in my life that I've dated, met, gone out with, or I'm just friends with, they were really, they either laughed, they thought it was funny, or they were like, hey, cool, thanks for the heads up, okay? That's a- All right, that's enough of that. So, for everybody that ran over because I put colorism in the title, if you're that triggered by the word colorism, you got, something has too much control over you. When I heard this woman speaking, I didn't get offended. I didn't get offended because I agree. But let me ask you, did she get drugged because of her skin color? Let me ask you, honestly, for the colorism crowd, if that had been um, a dark skinned woman in the media and she had gotten drugged for filth, would you have said she got drugged for her skin color or for her attitude? Men don't like bossy women, period. And women who are trying to get men outside of their looks level are going to be upset because you cannot make men value value. You cannot make men value your education. You cannot make men value your career your home, your 401k. You can't make men do that. That is not how we are wired. So, Tommy had something to teach you, black women. Number one, how women who care about their men act. Tommy has something to teach you, black women, how men who care about their women act. Because even with a public personality like that, when, her, when the men of her race group started pushing back, she came back and restated and apologized profusely. A high value, a white, a white woman who thinks she's high value came back, humbled herself and apologized profusely. Why? Go ask her. Because they understand, she understands that there's power in the group. Well, if black men say, I can understand some sisters were like, wait a minute, but if black men built Wakanda, then I would apologize. No, 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 no. If black men built Wakanda, then no. See, you'll never get Wakanda until you stop fighting your men. Whatever it is you want to say, if black men did this, then you get that. You'll never get that without working with your men. Other groups have studied the black community and in fractured nature and all this. And they've said, mm -mm. we don't want we don't want out of wedlock births because they are they are rising. You've heard people uh, in the gender war argument talking about, well, wait a minute, out of wedlock birth rates are rising other places and marital rates are dropping other places, too. Uh huh. Then in 2019, what happened? Marital rates were up the highest since two th since 1960. Divorce rates have been half since 1990. Other groups will do something to keep their families together, their people together, educated or not educated, high value or not high value. They won't destroy their family, and it doesn't matter how one of them, Tommy got her on her Instagram and got on one, they will check that crap because it is a danger to the group. Now, here's the question, honest question. If this had been a higher value, if this had been a black woman in her position, if this had been a black woman in her position, political pundit, uh, when you say Candace Owens, that's not fair. If that had been someone with her level of influence and a black woman would would we have seen any kind of retraction black men with with even when black men pushed back 
would there have been a retraction or would there be a double down? And we know damn well we would get a double down because we see it all the time. We've seen this happen here recently. There was a woman here in Atlanta whose cousin was supposedly abducted or had was was feared being abducted, remember? And that whole to do. And she called her cousin and her cousin got on Instagram and, and she drug black men for filth. Now this woman apparently was a black, a supporter of brothers. But all it took was her cousin calling her saying, cuz I'm being followed by these black men and da 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 da. And then the woman in question saying it on social media and not getting the response she felt like she should get or wanted to get. And she went off. Okay. Tommy Lauren went off. But then when brothers came back and responded, did black men get a response like Tommy Lauren got? Nope. What we got was we got more lectures. You got doubling and tripling down. <laughs> more war. Tommy Lauren teaching you how you need to handle your high value position, ladies. If you want to have a shot at building Wakanda, you cannot insult your men. And let that stuff ride. Even a white woman knows that. Oh, damn, we went there. We went there. We went there. You cannot insult and drag your men, tell them they're trash, tell them they're this, tell them they're that in public, and not pay a cost. That's the net net of it. Now, I know a lot of people don't know Tommy Lauren. Tommy Lauren uh, is a political pundit, but the lesson is there. The lesson is simply this. A woman who is above average cute, but very accomplished, wanting a man in her economic or tax bracket, but she is not in his looks range. Complaining about the treatment she's getting from high value men because they don't like women who are not really, she can be girly, but does that woman come across as feminine or masculine? Hot, the men that she wants in her tax bracket don't want women like this. Black men are not, or no different than any other group of men. You heard a white woman saying, High value men ghost me, aren't serious, aren't consistent. And then they would rather have a girl who's a, a airhead than an accomplished cultured woman. No, they just don't want a ball breaker. Let's open up the call line because something's going on tonight uh, with YouTube, man. Something happened with the notifications, the weather's going on out here. So here's the thing. My question is this, what can you learn from this Tommy Lauren situation? What can you learn from this Tommy Lauren situation? If you go into, a, if you go into the halls of power with this kind of attitude, you're always gonna get pushback. And one of the sad things I think that have happened to so many of our sisters is they have been, they've been useful to other people, but you've been weaponized against your own men. That doesn't mean in order to be, and here's the other thing, what, what, what do we need to just be barefoot and pregnant and uneducated? Come on, man, knock it off. Knock it off. That woman's education and accomplishments are not an excuse for her attitude. Remember that lady that called in the other day who was a lawyer with all the attitude? You mean to tell me you can't be a pleasant person and accomplished? It comes down to what you really think of people. And if you go into her backstory, she's had 
a, she tells you she had a horrible long-term relationship of which she's gotten therapy for. And then she, after that, she came out with a, with a new sex in the city girl's attitude. Well, has a, uh, engagement that's broken off. Go look at her story because right now, with all the access she has, all the visibility she has, everything that so many sisters were like, well, they got it easy over there. They got it easy over there. You got a thin white woman who's financially successful, popular, in the halls of power and all these things, and she can't get a man. Why? Danger zone! That attitude keeps you single. All right, why do you have to get on the camera? Because I'm not going to have a bunch of trolls calling in. So you don't have to be on YouTube, but you do need to get on the camera. Need to be able to see you. Jade, Yasmin, you're in the chat room. Your pictures are up. That's fine. Uh, which one wants to go first? Jade or Yasmin? You can flip the camera around real quick and then flip it off, but you don't have to, but you're going to have to at least show something. All right. You don't have to be on Jade. I see you. All right, Jade, how are you? Hello, Kevin, uh, or Mr. Samuels, I should say. Uh, I'm fine. How are you? I'm well. What you got on the topic? What can Tommy Lauren teach black women? Well, I I definitely thought colorism was an issue before. I mean, I still think it's an issue, but... Okay, why do you think it... What, seeing, what's the issue? What did you think the issue about colorism is? Well, I think that dark skin is kind of seen more... I think that a dark skin woman has to be a lot more feminine than a lighter skin woman um, for them to be considered on the same level. And, what and more attractive okay. as well. Okay, and what have you, what examples have you seen of this in your personal life? Well, I'd say almost entirely all the relationships that I have seen when the woman is no, darker. No, 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 no. Oh, I mean so. in your life, not what you've seen, because here's the thing. You, women like to do this oftentimes. You like to look at things and then interpret. And okay. inevitably, your interpretations are wrong. You don't know. So tell me about in your life where your skin, where you've had to be more feminine to get the same attention or opportunities as light skin women. Well, I'll say that in my work experiences and also in dating experiences. In your in what in your in your dating experiences in your what? In work experiences. Okay. Give me an example. I person I personally uh well, one example. So I worked with uh a Latino woman that was she was she was fit uh definitely, um but she was very loud. Um she cursed a lot. Um, but it was never a problem. There was an encounter that I had with um, with with an older woman that was being very aggressive towards me. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't respond in the best way. I also responded aggressively and they, um, and I was given a lot of negative energy that this Latino woman was never given, even though she was consistently loud. Okay, consistently okay, cursing. okay, okay, okay. This is a very vague story. Nothing specifically happened. Let me tell you what I just heard. I'm speeding down the highway. The speed limit is 65 or 70 miles an hour, right? And, yeah. and I'm going 100. And a woman and, and somebody next to me is going 103. Cop pulls <laughs> me over, gives me a ticket. Cops are unfair. Were you breaking the law? Yep. In your situation, were you breaking the law? Yep, I was. But but instead of just checking yourself, 
you go outside of yourself to assume some stuff that you cannot prove. No, that is true. That is true. And I did, and like I said, I, I did admit that I was aggressive when I should not have been, so. Oh, oh, oh let's stop right there. I just asked you to prove or validate or substantiate what you say you believe. And you have, you, this, this is the best you could give me? Well, what I was trying to say is that I had one negative experience that that I could think of. And in return, I was respond, I received a very negative response, which was deserved. But it was but, deserved. Yes, but I'm saying there was someone that regularly behaved outrageously. So ma'am, do you um, make room for the possibility that maybe your perceptions are just off? No, it's, it's possible, definitely. Okay, because here's what I hear a lot of times from this colorism argument. I have, I act bad because I've been treated bad. And then I see other people who act as bad as I do, but they don't get the same response. Well, tell me about when you act good. And when you act well, are you still getting treated poorly? Generally, no. Show over. <laughs> Show over. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. We're done. I just solved the no. colorism debate. When you act the way you want to get treated, you tend to get treated well. So you're 100% right. But no, no. I, I mean, I really, perfect. I mean, here's the thing. I, I, you can give time. me a percentage, but man, but at the end of the day, more times when you talk about this colorism thing, it's an assumption. It's a feeling. And you, and I, I rarely, I have yet to have somebody tell me it was, it was because of my skin color. You can assume that, but you barely have somebody just being innocent, doing nothing. I know it's going to take some people off because they're going to be, no, that's not right. Color is nothing. Yes, everything matters. You can have a Latina woman and a black woman. There's going to be prejudices and perception differences between both. Absolutely. No different than you can have a Latina woman and a white woman, a white woman and an Asian woman. Everyone has prejudices. But to say you get treated differently solely based on the, and it, that's the determining factor. I'm still waiting for that story. Okay. So what I, what I was going to say that I learned from Tommy Lauren is that it's good to be humble. And I believe that I'm generally a pretty humble person. I can admit when I'm wrong. Like you said, like my perception about some things that may be off, but I think generally I'm, I try my best to be level-headed. I try my best to not hurt anybody. I don't want to offend anybody um, ever. So, okay. And and that's kind of one of the things that I, I took away from what she was well, talking about. Tommy, Tommy, Lauren. Like I said, no one. <laughs> she made up a lot. What I heard, I didn't say she was wrong for wanting what she wants. But getting mad at people for what she cannot get, she's out of her looks lane. So, okay, but I'm going to put you back in the, um, oh, okay, I've already got you there. So thank you for calling in. Thank you for uh, uh, answering the questions and at least trying to go down the path. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hey, uh, Jerry, uh, I can't see you. The room is dark. Uh, if you can't come onto the camera, you can stay right there. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Go ahead and come into the light, Mr. Troll. Come on. Come on, Mr. Troll. Hey, he's back. Come on, Jerry. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on, boy. Come on, Jerry. Come on, Jerry. Come on, Jerry. Amy, come back to the uh, camera real quick. Hi. Okay. Go ahead and unmute yourself. All okay. right. So, can you hear me? Yeah. What can you learn from Tommy Lauren, if anything? I think it's the attitude. Uh, you keep on saying we have to be mindful of our attitude, and her first video clearly showed that. 
she came across as very aggressive uh, too masculine and her second video even though she was making points but she was more feminine and came across as more respectful you know let me ask you let me ask you a question amy let me ask you a question what she said men are trash three times in that first video if if a man had said something along those lines if a black man had said something along those lines or a man period or a black man in particular do you think he'd have had a job the next day no i don't think so everybody will be on his case <laughs> not only does she have a job she was allowed a chance to go back and make it right mm -hmm. so um oh jerry love oh he had to go back to the pound poor jerry <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and get to uh, who is this Priscilla because I do want to answer some uh, some other questions too because I know this colorism thing and we're going to do a standalone colorism show because we got to have a conversation about this Priscilla how are you I'm good sir how are you I'm good all right did you see the video I did yeah. uh, was that the first time seeing it yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy right it is. It's scary, actually. <laughs> what was scary about it? Um, I think the amount of anger she had in the first video, I, it almost felt like something just happened like the night before and she was just like letting out the anger mm -hmm. through that rant. Yeah. So, um, how do I want to ask this? That's a loaded question because yes, we've seen this kind of rant from in this community, we've seen our, we've seen women say that stuff about men, but there's really, well, what else would you like to put into it? Because I don't want to lead you down that path. What else would you like to add about it? Um, I think that it was very mature of her to come back and humble herself and apologize. And I think that's the turning point because most of the times when we black women make a mistake, we are afraid to come back and apologize and be humble because we think that the men might laugh at us to take advantage, but it's a great way to show that it's okay to acknowledge you're wrong and say you're sorry and try to try to be better. Yeah. Well, and see, that's what I kind of want to get to because usually when I hear a sister talk about coming back and humbling, it'll come back. Well, yeah, she came back because the white men own the economy. So she had to come back because her money was on the line. Uh, let's just say that's true. She still had to come back. I think well, oftentimes the sisters use that. It's an excuse to not have to do better because it's saying if you own the economy, we'd act like them too. No, if you like your men, you wouldn't want to have that hanging out there about your men, calling them trash. So uh, you said a lot of times you feel like sisters fear that men will take advantage yeah what, what do you mean i mean there is always a there's this pride they want to hold on to um i don't beg a man they want to hold on to some power there is a fear to just be completely vulnerable and say i'm sorry and maybe the man is going to say well you were wrong you know and he's going to like backlash at you for a minute which you deserve they don't want to be in that position of you were wrong just take it 100 percent. they want to hold on to some power i did this because okay nothing warrants you to misbehave i don't care how bad a man is to you you can walk away you just okay. you, you don't have to do that you know oh here, here's the thing i agree and I, I something my my gut tells me that A lot of our, unfortunately, so many of our, 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 in our culture, we don't trust each other. There's not a lot of good faith. Yeah. So it's like, well, if I make a mistake, uh, like you said, they're gonna hold this over my head. They're never gonna let me go. They're never gonna forget it. And I'll never live it down. Never not thinking that, you know what? You'll make a mistake. They'll accept the apology and you can just move on. Cause there's yeah. a lot of grudge holding. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay, good good point. Let me get to uh let me get to Moto. What is this? I don't I don't have a name here, so we're gonna go Moto. You gotta put your microphone on. Moto E5 play. I have spoke when I speak 
to men and tell them to do this or do that, to get yourself together, to, to, to understand it's a jungle out there. If you want to be seriously dressed like a man, put on a suit, cut your hair, take off the Jordans, take off the jerseys, get out there and work 60 hours, do all that stuff. Oh, you love that. Women love that stuff. But then when you turn around and say, well, guess what? You're going to need to be cooperative and work with your man and this and that. No, 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 no. Unfortunately, like it or not, black women, you have a reputation of being difficult to deal with. And you don't change that reputation by trying to insult everybody that has the nerve to try to talk to you. Because unfortunately, when you have 80% of our children being born out of wedlock, one out of four being married, you're not winning. And you can't blame the fact that you're not winning on everybody else. You, bl you can't blame it on everybody else. And here's another thing. Every black man that you've tried to make your enemy is not. Here's the thing. And the sad thing is it's a lot of younger women. It's a lot of younger women. And inevitably, let me see how I can say this as politically correct as possible. Inevitably, you have a group of, we have a, our culture has got to the point to where no one can tell women any truth. In the late 80s, early 90s, a book was written by one Shaharazad Ali, and it's called The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. And in there, she basically said that everyone has been kind of held to task or evaluated for their for their part in this uh, issue that's the black community, except the women. This was a black woman and actually tried to write down and have a thoughtful way of dealing with it. But people seized on one passage, one sentence, and everywhere that woman went, instead of having an inter having a uh, interview about it, you had women and you had men, uh, so-called guys, seizing on this, and it was like blood sport. It this was before the internet. This was before uh, before things were very recorded. So a lot of this stuff isn't. You can go on YouTube right now and see it. But what you notice is in a lot of those audiences, you had men standing up saying, thank you for writing, writing that book. Thank you. Because for the first time, somebody's finally said, you know what? It ain't all your issue, brother. And it's hard dealing with this woman over here, dealing with that over there. Are we? And that happened. But they effectively shouted her down. And after that point, for 30 plus years, it's just been allowed to get to this point. And the relationships between men and women have gotten further and further and further away. My generation, Generation X, gave birth to millennial single mothers, un, 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 boys raised without dads. And then you get this group, Xennials. You can almost guarantee that the, women, the people who call in, the people who have the biggest issue with what I'm talking about are likely either one of these two things. Single mother or in that 80% that's overweight. Two things that have nothing, two things that have nothing to do with, you can control those things. But see, you're not supposed to say those things. And the fact that you actually say, well, all right, those things, no one is, you, you're not responsible for your situations, but you are responsible for, for doing something. It's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. Whatever situation you're in, you got to do something about it. And unfortunately, we have a situation that a lot of black women don't want to hear nothing from nobody. You're supposed to accept everything you do. No one can say nothing. The only people you like is the one that are telling you you're a king, you're this, you're that. And it doesn't matter if you say it in a nice way or it doesn't matter if you're cussing them out. So here's the question. Who do you want saying anything to you? And the answer it comes back to nobody. It comes back to nobody. And that's just not going to work. It's not going to work because my generation, millennials and zennial men are two are different men. Zennial men are, are I we had a sister on the channel 
talking about how her name was Ebony and her children, one is her oldest daughter is dating a Latino guy and her son doesn't want to date a black woman because he's 15, but he sees the ill treatment. I mean, do y'all not see it over here? It's about men becoming the best version of themselves, women becoming the best version of themselves, and people being happy. And I'm sorry. When you are happy and doing what you're supposed to be doing, you are going to attract angry, upset, hurt people. You're going to. You're going to attract hurt people. I will, I will tell you this. I don't care about... If you swirl or date out or whatever, let me let let me let you any of the people in that community know, you're not gonna come over here and uh, argue with me. I got no argument with you. If you have an issue with me, you can't have an issue with what I say. What is it? Like I said, I don't fear a woman dating out. I don't fear a woman talking about these guys over here are better. I, I don't worry about Brad. I beat Brad. Brothers, what it comes down to is there are a lot of folks who are upset that you're actually trying to become better versions of yourself. And there are a lot of women who are upset with the women who come over here. And they want to call you pick me's and, and, and this and that. And they want to down you. You got to ask yourself, why are so many people threatened by a man, black men wanting to become better versions of themselves Black women want to become better versions of themselves and black men and black women saying they want to deal with one another. Why are so many people threatened by that? It's not